ओके 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 ना ओके ओके आई हैव मेक को होस्ट बियर नागा एंड आवर ऑनरेबल मॉडरेटर डॉक्टर शिलिबी So I know all of this have joined us, uh, but uh, some of our present speakers today have also a presentation. So I think that it will be good that they will be also co-hosts for their presentation. Yeah, many of the speakers I could see they are co-hosts. Okay. Many of the speakers. Okay. Okay. And Diana, 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 please. Uh, dear Nada, uh, I uh, will make you host. You will make me co-host, and you will make another uh, uh, speaker or all of his speaker co-host. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Uh, 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 here, here, here are <clears throat> all participants now host. But I think that nobody will play with that, so it's okay. No, in I, case I you any host. guest speaker. Dear Nada, I have made you host. Please make me co-host and you can make all of the speaker as co-host. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in case if any guest speaker wants to run the presentation, just put a message in the <coughs> chat box and we'll make you the co-host. Uh, dear Nara, please uh, make co-host Monohar Hussain. Monohar Hussain Choudhury, make co-host for taking live. For taking yeah. Facebook live, Monohar Hussain Choudhury, please make co-host and me make a uh, co-host. Uh, I don't, I don't have, <clears throat> I have only here two options. Who can share? Only host or all participants? I don't have options. You are so, host now. You are host now. Uh, uh, Yes, but I tell what I see. I see who can share. I have two two options. Only you host can, all participants. Yeah, Nada, you uh, can click um, uh, my, above my name. You can click on my name and uh, click right button. You uh, uh, can. Make a host. Mm -hmm. Okay, who who else? Who else? Monowaros and Monowaros and Soduri. Okay, okay. मनोहर हुसैन चौधरी मोटिस में कोहोस्ट मनोहर हुसैन चौधरी यस 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 आई मेक इज इट यस आई मेक हु एल्स ओके ओके वी विल आई थिंक पेट्रिशिया आल्सो शी हैज रेज्ड द हैंड Monohar Hussain raises hand. Monohar Hussain raises hand. You can see here. Monohar Hussain raises hand. Please make co-host Monohar Hussain for taking live Facebook live. I put him as a. He is a co-host. He is. Monohar Hussain raises hand. Raises hand. Please uh, stop share, please. Okay, uh, dear, uh, our organizing team, Chief uh, Global Community Leader Nada Ratkovic, Professor Dr. Nada Ratkovic, uh, you can 
uh, start uh, now. Uh, this is time to start our session. Yeah. Okay. 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 Shelly, you can go. Yeah. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow's belongs to those who prepare it for it today. The roots of education are bitter, but the fruit is sweet. Education is the key to unlocking the golden door of freedom. International Day of Education is an annual International Observance Day held on January 24 and is dedicated to education. This year marks the fourth International Day of Education under the theme, Changing Codes, Transforming Education. Education is one of the most powerful things in life. It allows us to find the meaning behind everything and helps improve lives in a massive way. The right to education is enshrined in Article 26. And that is what, why we are meeting here today to celebrate such an important occasion. Well, my dear audience, a blissful good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I am Dr. Shelley Bish, your moderator of the event, and is a passionate, dynamic, enthusiastic, creative nation builder with more than two decades of experience with a zeal to foster holistic education and learning to children of senior secondary school. I want to utilize my dedication to foster quality education required for a child's development. I want to develop and promote creativity and high order thinking skills that increase the performance of the children. I want to offer endless opportunities for career growth and to keep up with cutting edge educational technologies. I would like to leverage my extrovert and dynamic approach in teaching students. With my great administrative and coordination skills, I would work to perform organizational tasks and duties. So, Global Education Network celebrates International Day of Education today on Monday, that is January 24, 2022, on the topic, Changing Codes, Transforming Education. Let me give a very warm and cordial welcome to the organizing team, without whose support and coordination, Today's event could not have been planned. Let's rejoice and put our hands together for the founder and organizer of Global Education Network, Mr. Mohiddin Buya from Bangladesh. I am indebted to him for giving me an opportunity to moderate today's session. We have the pleasure to have him here amongst us. I request him to kindly address the gathering with his honorable few words. So over to Mr. Bhuya. Okay, thank you. Thank you, dear great moderator. Uh, uh, we know that you are great moderator. Uh, you moderate uh, different types of session in the uh, global, in the group. So you can moderate. Uh, welcome uh, to you on the behalf of Global Education Network. Please, over to you. Yeah, thank you so much, sir. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce and welcome Dr. Nada, Global Community Leader from GEN and IAU Board Member from Croatia. Fortunately, she's a close friend of mine and no doubt your audience, she came across to me as a very, very hard working individual. Very cooperative soul and is a delight to connect. Thanks to be an integral part of this event and I would like to hear pearls of wisdom from you. So over to Dr. Nada. Uh, thank you. Thank you, dear Shelly, Dr. Shelly Bist, uh, my dear friend and moderator. I'm really honored and grateful to be here today on this special day for all of us educators, all of us educators around the world. This is a really special day and we like educators want big changes and that is also our topic topic is said the changes are going in other direction transforming challenges so we are here today to share our experience and we want also to continue growing and bringing a bright future for the education for our youth so thank you dear 
founder and Malki Uden for this opportunity. Thank you all here today, participants. Uh, I will give uh, the uh, world to our founder. Our founder has uh, a small presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Just uh, I have a three or four minute presentation. Uh, uh, just I want to inform about a uh, Zen uh, present status. Uh, so I want to uh, screen share. My screen is visible. Uh, yes, it is visible to us. Okay, welcome to you all. You can welcome. double click to make it full screen. Just double click it so that it is full screen to us. Okay, welcome to welcome to all. Welcome to our today's uh, session. Uh, happy International Day of Education. Uh, today is a great session uh, led by great uh, organizing team. Uh, welcome to organizing team chief, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Dr. Nadar Akubik, and welcome to all of our today's speaker. Welcome to our great uh, moderator and all of today's attendants. Uh, welcome on the behalf of Global Education Network. Plus, uh, that's the first time I want to introduce myself in short way. My name is Mohyuddin Bhuya, Le Lexara Department of Accounting, Iqbal Memorial Government College, Feni Bangladesh, President <coughs> Virtual Educators Collaboration Bangladesh, MI expert and Adobe Educator. And just I want to uh, say about uh, Zen information. Zen has established uh, only, only six months, exactly six months before from now, 24th July 2021, founder uh, me, Mohyuddin Bunya, and our Facebook group link. And now our Facebook group member, 4,400 plus. Our Facebook Facebook link is here, and Facebook page follower, 5,865. And total country is now 106, and total membership, 865 now. Uh, that uh, uh, I want to read the uh, mission of Global Education Network to attain 21st century skill, create collaboration and better communication among educators across the globe to fulfill the goal of SDG 4. And the activities of Zen, arrange international webinar of, for different kinds of issues and days. I have arranged, we have arranged uh, two days uh, event uh, for about our activities and a student youth mentoring and support for problem solving, arranging different kind of workshops for improved pedagogical skill to improve different kinds of education tool among the educators to implement blended learning tools among the educators. Then global research engagement now. Position global organizer one, global executive leader four, Global Committee oh. Executive 5, Global Office Executive 5, Country Coordinator 106, and Global Executive Member 98, National Community Member 626, total now certified membership 865. This was information about Global Education Network and uh, top 50 countries in Bangladesh, uh, total membership, sorry, uh, membership engaged uh, 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 wrongly written uh, 10 or 100. This is 100. Bangladesh is 100 membership. India 70, second position, Philippines 65, Egypt 46, Georgia 34, Vietnam 32, Pakistan 26, Azerbaijan 23, Tunisia 21, Brazil 18, Thailand 18. Just uh, I want to skip this slide for the lack of time. Just uh, I want to uh, see or I want to show you a top 50 country, uh, different uh, types of country, different country in the world, a membership. Uh, you see that just uh, this was uh, my information. Thank you. Thanks to uh, uh, thanks for hearing me. Thank you all.
Okay. Wow. Now that was something incredible, Mr. Mohibdin Boya. As I could see from your presentation, the organization is not even one years old. You just started it on 24th of July 2021, but it has grown immensely. You have connected to all 50 countries and the membership and the followers, which I could see, which you have just presented in your report, is you know commendable. And I give all my you know regards to you that you are doing a great show. All the best to you, and I think in the coming years, the organization will grow like anything, and you will get such a social connect and a global reach. God bless you, and I think it is incredible, and GEN will be a great show today. So with this, I once again welcome all of you over here, and next we have the other organizing team member, I would like to give a cordial welcome to Professor Olivera, who is a global executive member of GEN from Croatia. Thanks for your constant support and we really appreciate your work. And it will be a delight if you could unmute yourself and address the gathering for a minute or two. So over to Professor Olivera. Uh, can I have Professor Olivera with us? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Uh, you can come on the video mode and address the gathering. My camera is uh, um, out. I don't know what is, what's happening. Okay, okay, it doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We will just like wear you out for a minute. Uh, excuse me, I don't understand. Okay, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. I just wanted to give you a cordial welcome as the member of the organizing team. I also welcome Professor Patricia, who is the country coordinator of Jen from Zimbabwe. Gratitude for your association with us, and we are elated to have you amongst us. If you would like to address the gathering, you can unmute yourself and come on the video mode to address two words. Professor Patricia. Uh, can I have Professor Patricia amongst us? Okay. Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time to rejoice and accord a cordial and a very warm welcome for today's guest of honor, who is none other than Ambassador Dr. Lilibet Gregorio from Philippines who is an international speaker, writer, author, and an outstanding principal, education ambassador, social activist, and community education leader, global coordinator, and global educators, Glenn, from Eloisian Publication Global Academy of Human Excellence. Can I have the honor to bring her on the stage so that she can address the beautiful moment of us? So over to Ambassador Dr. Lilibet. Yes, you can you can unmute yourself, ma'am. Please unmute yourself. Yeah. All right. So can you hear me now? Yes, yes. All right. So good evening, delight. good morning, and of course, good afternoon to everyone, to the world. And of course, to Dr. Buyan, the founder of this uh, Global Education Network. Thank you for this invitation, uh, Sister Nada, and all the speakers and all the educators here in these platforms. Thank you so much. I'm going to share my screen. Can you see now? Uh, can you see now we are not able to see the screen of yours okay you can try once again all right okay i can't
Can you see now? Uh, no, ma'am. It's not visible to us. I hope this you are sharing show. the screen. I will. I will add this there. Uh, Doctor Lilibet, are you clicking on the share screen option, which is there? Yes. The yes. Uh, we have precisely. We have a low. I think it's a problem with the network, little bit. Yes. Uh, so you can go. Yes. You can go. Listen, you can if you can. Okay. You, you can go without presentation. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Is it uh, okay with you? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. All right. Okay so uh, I have a presentation which is uh, inclusive education the new normal. This is very particular on the topic of us in the. In this theme, changing course, transforming education. All right, let me say what is inclusion in education. We have a very particular of this uh, specific topic. Inclusion education embraces the philosophy of accepting all children, regardless of race, the size, the shape, the color, the ability or a disability with support from school staff, the students, parents, and the community. A comprehensive inclusive program for children with special needs has the following components. All right, so what is the definition of this inclusion? Inclusion in education refers to a model wherein students with special needs spend most of all their time with non-special needs students. Inclusion is understanding your school community, the volume everyone about the needs of a whole community, Celebrating uh, the diversity and, and diversity. And of course, there is more than uh, just a policy providing a flexible uh, group of these learnings, valuing other cultures, knowing and understanding the needs of all learners, not just about the, the uh, individual educational plans. And of course, we have the inclusion of reflecting on your practice, not just about the access. It's changing the way things are organized so they suit their learners' needs. So everybody's responsibility. All right, so what are the components of this inclusive education? The teachers, the family, the school staff, inclusive students, and of course, the other students as well. And of course, here in the inclusion, we have the five uh, parts that we have included here. The school district, the home, the state, and of course, the school and the classroom. As we have re welcome to the school district, we have the finding for schools, example, the staffing, and of course, the how to materialize the learning uh, materials of the schools. And we have the qualified staff, the resources, and the safety and accessibility to physical spaces, the ongoing training of the schools and the community. And of course, we can include here the receiving teachers as well. In the home, we include the knowledge, the communication, the involvement, and of course, the support of all the parents and the family in the home. In the state includes the curriculum and inclusive student-centered learning. In the special education, mandate the, the virtues across the size, the class, the composition, and the staff qualification and needs of learners. And the funding, we have here in its districts, we have downloaded by the central office. We have mandated here that downloading will be granted in the public schools and, of course, the private schools. How about the school? Administrative and staff who value education and of course allocate resources to support inclusion and inclusion opportunities throughout the school. It plays the sports and of course the clubs. And about the classroom? Train teachers and the para professionals. And we include here the skills, the strategies, deliver curriculum. And of course, individual education plan, access to uh, specific when school district 
And of course, we have their adopted physical education. So these are the inclusion we have needed in the school and of course in the private uh, uh, schools that we have in a certain country, especially in the Philippines. The importance of inclusion in education. Some of the benefits of inclusion of children with or without disabilities are we have the friendship, the skills, the peer models, the problem solving, the skills, the positive image, and of course, the respect for elders. This can trickle down their families as well, teaching parents and families to be more accepting of the differences. And the importance of inclusive education to fulfill the constitutional responsibilities, to enable children to stay with their families, for the development of healthy citizenship, for achieving the universalization, developing feeling of self-respect, for social equality, and of course, the self-reliance. And what are the inclusive classroom strategies that we have included here? We have five inclusive classroom strategies. So number one, you get to know your students and let them get to know you. Establishing a bond with your students takes time. Create a space for students to share. Deliver instruction in a variety of ways. Choose relevant literature. And of course, you have to invite speakers to share stories. We have to be particular that, that this uh, guest will be your, uh, your um, the principal as well, of course, the guidance counselor, and of course, the needs of the children in each specific uh, uh, majors. So here in the next um, group, the four stages of inclusion we identified now. Number one is no effort is being made. Number two is the segregation. The children are allowed into a class but kept separate from the mainstream. Integration, the children in the mainstream set occasionally or permanently. And the last is the inclusion. All right. And we have here the inclusive teaching practices. So what is this practice that will be given to the inclusive learners in the instruction? Participate. The act of joining with others in doing something, achieve, to succeed in finishing something or reaching an aim, especially a lot after a lot of work or effort. Enjoy, to have to you once use, you have to benefit or a lot of experience, enjoy great success. Collaborate, to work jointly with others or together, especially in our intellectual endeavor. Engage. To become involved with someone or something in very conservative teacher who will not engage with the students. All right, so we have the eight indicators of an inclusive classroom. We have here the special and general educators work together. We have the student population reflects natural proportion. And of course, the groupings and seating are heterogeneous. When say heterogeneous, a mix of learners with just the special needs and a normal uh, uh, learners. And co-planning time is built in. Lessons are differentiated. Community building is a priority. And the students don't live to learn. So we have here indicated this instruction is engaging and exciting. So we have designs learners based on students' learning style. All right. So Particularly, we have here on the what are the special education and the inclusion of these learners. Inclusion in special education program is an important part of the continuum of special education placement required by individuals with disabilities, Education Act. Inclusion refers to the practice of educating children with learning disabilities and other types of disabilities in the regular education classroom. So individual with disabilities education act, we have ensured that all children with disabilities are entitled to a free appropriate public education to meet their unique needs and prepare them for further education, the employment and independent living. So we have here on the center is the child with disabilities. We have this uh, on the Around of this is a teacher's school management committee 
the head teacher or the principal, training in how to support children with disabilities, creating an accessible, inclusive learning environment, the parents, family, and community awareness, the working with local civil society and government on a socializing inclusive education. And we have to, a child to child activities. And the last is the child identification assessment and support. So in we have well, classified the public school. And of course, in, the, in our specific school, in my school, we have a free test in all children. So each children have the specific um, uh, process on the test so that we have identified what is a specific um, ailments or what they have specific uh, uh, proposed that they have to be in their innovations or in their uh, uh, needs to uh, needs to implement. All right. So in the support education for children with disabilities, we have very in bear in mind, my dear educators, that together let's ensure that every child is complete or equality, inclusive education without discrimination or exclusion. So here we have to identify that inclusive education is the student academic achievement in inclusive classes in a comparable or superior to that of the student. The quality of instruction and provided to students in inclusive classes in incomparable or superior to that of the students in self contained classes and we have inclusive educational programs have an adverse effect on the academic achievement of students without disabilities and we have also students in the in uh, industrial classes have more access in the core than students and self-contained classes or the students in inclusive classes have more interactions with with the receiving or more support from peers without disabilities than st students in self-contained class. And students in inclusive classes, especially vocational class, have improved adjustment to employment. And the last of inclusive classes to improve students' adjustment to community uh, bringing or community support. So all the students in these inclusive classes at the end of the school year, they are more productive, they are more responsible, and they are not they are now committed learners in society, and they have to use their talent and specific skills. So as uh, educators, we have to commit ourselves that we are the one to respect them. We are the one to commit ourselves that we have to give them more emphasis, to give them more uh, proud of them because of their ailments, because of their, um, what we have, they, um, uh, all of, their, of these processes, they can include that they have to perform well in the classroom. So as all, this is my last word that I have to give all of you, my dear uh, fellow educators and all leaders. The great aim of education is not knowledge, but action. Thank you so much. This is Ambassador Dr. Lilibet P. Gregorio from the Philippines. And I congratulate you for this uh, very uh, wonderful day, for this international uh, day of us. And of course, the additional and uh, we have to be very uh, clap our celebration. Happy International Day of Education. Congratulations and mabuhay. Congratulations, Dr. Lilibet, to you also for the wonderful presentation you have given on the topic. As I could see the chat box, it is bombastic and participants and attendees and everybody just loved your presentation and they have given you all compliments for it so congratulations once again and yes the highlights of your presentation which i could see from uh, the words which you have spoken is all about the inclusive education those special educators and the special children and one thing i want to highlight over here is if you look mm -hmm. at the five fingers of us it is not equal to teach the normal children it's something very very easy for all educators but to teach 
differently abled children, special children, it is very difficult because we need to keep in concept of our compassion, empathy, and everything. As you talk about the collaboration, as you talk about the engagement, as you talk about the patient's level in each and everything, mm -hmm. this is something what we need to cater to because teaching is a noble profession. And if we are giving special emphasis to these children, we are just doing a noble job. And that is what I just, you know, summarized listening to your lecture. So congratulations for the great lecture. And indeed, we look forward for some more things to come up. So ladies and gentlemen, the time has come to celebrate our International Day of Education and to welcome all our elite and esteemed guest speakers across the globe. So without any further ado, let me welcome our first guest speaker, who is none other than Professor Dr. Pratik Rajan Mungekar from India, the land of festivals and religion. He is a scientist, professor, global educator, published author, counselor, social activist, and an international speaker. He started teaching at 16 and have been working in the field of education and research as a professor, scientist, counselor for 11 years. And he has taught more than 8,000 students and guided 4,000 plus career counseling till date. And the count is still on. And let me tell you all my audience and loving audience, if I keep sharing his achievement, it will be more than enough for me because you know the time will run out and his achievements will not be over by then. So without any further, you know, uh, uh, delay, I would request Dr. Pratik to kindly unmute himself and kindly uh, bring on his presentation to this wonderful event of yours. So over to Dr. Pratik. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shaili, for your kind words. So good morning, good evening, good afternoon, when and all present here. It's our day, so let's celebrate with joy and happiness. So I'll start with my talk. So transforming education to prepare students to invent the future. Human talent is rapidly becoming the most important asset for individuals, communities, and nations. As the world changes rapidly because of globalization and technological innovation, new opportunities and challenges arise for individuals, communities, and nations. So Squap, the founder of the World Economic Forum, predicts that the fourth industrial revolution resulting from increase and ubiquitous automation and the development of artificial intelligence will eliminate many of the jobs currently available. Together with neurotechnological and genetic developments, these changes will create new opportunities and serious challenges, which require a heightened commitment to putting humans at the center and empowerment as a core. So these developments create a new urgency to examine whether children and youth are being prepared to be effective and productive citizens and workers, and to not just understand the future, but to invent it. This is very important. There is an emerging consensus that the skills students will need to invent the future must include cognitive, interpersonal, and intrapersonal skills. The growing awareness that the adequate development of these requires deliberate efforts to cultivate them is also stimulating questions and innovations about the kind of educational experiences which can cultivate those skills. In a recent study, researchers from the initiative found that governments around the world are broadening curricular goals and aligning them with this multi-pronged view of competencies that include not only cognition, but also self-knowledge and the capacity to collaborate or what is often also termed cognitive and socio-emotional development. Another recent study comparatively examined programs of teacher professional development that aimed at supporting teachers with capacities to educate students holistically in the cognitive, intrapersonal and interpersonal domains. The study found that the majority of those programs involved public-private partnerships in which organizations external to the school networks of schools supporting teachers in multi-pronged ways to support innovative pedagogies that fostered the development of the whole child. So rote memorization and teacher-centered instruction remain the core mode of educational delivery across much of the region. Instruction often focuses on the 
you can say memorization of facts rather than the application of such knowledge to analysis to the solution of problems or to collaborative problem solving. Little focus is placed on the development of creative thinking or soft skills such as leadership, teamwork and written and oral communication. This is reinforced by the nature of assessment in much of the region. Comprehensive examinations favor transparently assemble multiple choice questions rather than essays and application of knowledge, meaning that schools are further incentivized to teach to the test and thus favor rote learning methods. As a result, youth in the region score poorly in internationally comparable examinations, which measures the ability to solve problems such as the trends in international mathematics and science studies and program for international student assessments also, that is PISA. Youth lacks the competitive age needed to secure gainful employment in a tight labor market. The region faces the highest rate of youth and unemployment in the world, 30, you can say 30% on the average, more than the double the world average. So the first principle is that a powerful approach to develop curriculum is to start with the end in mind, very important. While most curriculum planning starts with the direction in terms of knowledge or competencies that it is aligned to it, seldom extends that end into a larger vision that informs the selection of such competencies. As a result, why there are there may well be an implicit long-term vision that provides direction to the competencies which guide the development of curriculum. Such vision is not public, and therefore the central hypothesis which guides such curriculum. You can say, therefore, uh, if students gain these competencies, they will be able to achieve the followings are not public knowledge and therefore untestable. I propose an alternative approach, which makes the two key hypotheses, which undergrade and curriculum public and therefore the subject of professional and public accountability. Those key hypotheses are as follows. First, that if we engage students in particular learning experiences, they will gain certain capabilities. And second, that if they gain such capabilities, they will be able to achieve particular long-term results with consequences to them and to the communities of which they are members. So these resources align curriculum with a public ambitious non-partition vision, which has been endorsed by governments around the world. This is as close as we can get to public compact reflecting humanity's shared aspiration of the common good. The United Nations Sustainable Development Goals offer an aspirational vision of world that is inclusive in peace and sustainable. Each of the 17 goals included in the framework adopted by more than 150 world leaders at the UN General Assembly in 2015, the goals drive a series of specific targets, each spelled out in ways which are measurable. For example, goal number one, no poverty, focuses on eradicating the most extreme forms of poverty from the planet. So there are six specific targets give concretion to these goals, which you can search it on Google. The United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which aims to erad eradicate poverty in all its dimensions by 2030, includes measures to reduce by at least by half the proportion of men, women, and children of all ages living in poverty, as well as ensure that all men and women have equal rights. So achieving each of, the, of those targets requires specific actions, which in turn requires specific capabilities that people must have. As these global targets can only be achieved as local communities to their share, they necessarily implicate actions and choices made by many people around the world. Providing people with the capabilities to take those actions and make those choices is the task of education. By, en by engaging educators in the analysis of which specific capabilities are necessary to achieve these targets and in turn discern which pedagogies and experience will help students gain those capabilities. The approach I followed did more than start with the end in mind. It provided a level of transparency and professional and public accountability to the choices made in any curriculum design that are seldom available in state standards or with textbooks and curriculum resources. So thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank my dear sister and friend Nada and uh, our director of Global Education Network, Dr. Mohiddin Bhuya, 
for giving me to express my thoughts on such an amazing topic. Thank you. Thank you everyone for listening. Welcome and welcome and a great presentation indeed to Dr. Pratik. And as I heard you, you talked about artificial intelligence. You talked about the need to develop a strong curriculum for the children so that the rote learning should disappear. You know, we talked about the socio, we talk about the cognitive skills and everything to be developed so that the children start thinking of their own creativity. You try to bring the innovation to the pedagogies and everything so that you know the bar of education needs to be raised. You talked about the sustainable development, the UN 17 goals also, how to eradicate the poverty by 2030. And I believe unless and until all educators are not united and together we don't work on developing a strong curriculum for the children, this cannot be combated. So congratulations for bringing a strong perspective to this today's celebration. And with this, let me now come to the next great guest speaker of ours, who is also mm -hmm. one of my great friends. And I think all, I believe 103 attendees and participants are over here. So I'm referring to none other than, but the great, great, great educator across the globe. Yes, you all are correct. I am referring to Rania Lampo from Greece, who is a global educator, STEM instructor, ICT teacher trainer, neuroeducation researcher, international keynote speaker, author of scientific books for kids and global peace ambassador in Greece. She has a postgraduate degree emit in language teaching related to cognitive neurosciences. And she is also a passionate researcher on cognitive neurosciences and neuroeducation. Currently, she's a STEM instructor at the Greek Astronomy and Space Company. And I believe even as I spoke for Dr. Pratik, the same goes for her also, you know, because the list of achievement, it is too big and it's not possible for me to cover all the achievements right now in front of uh, the guests because the time management also we have to keep in mind. And as I think eight minutes are there in the kitty of all the guest speakers, everybody should get the due uh, time. To this. So without any further ado, I invite Rania to give her presentation to today's celebration. So over to Rania. Good afternoon to Ola from Greece. Thank you so much, Dr. Shelley, for your wonderful introduction. And I would like to convey my warm congrats to the Global Education Network for the organization of this great event. And thank especially Dr. Nadam for her kind invitation. Today, we celebrate the National Day of Education 2022, and this day aims to generate discussions and debates around how to strengthen education as a public and even a common good. Educators are change makers because they are visionary and persistent individuals with innovative ideas and solutions to society's most pressing social, cultural, environmental challenges for national and global impact. Imagine a new reality, take action and collaborate with others to bring that new reality into being for the good of others. And education can change the world by increasing access to free, quality, inclusive education. The results can be transformational for individuals, communities, societies at large. The value of investing in education is indisputable because it reduces inequality between women and men, improves economic development, promotes peace and lifts people out of poverty. Therefore, education is the most important step for investment in the development of countries and everyone must promote it to the greatest level. Today, schools are facing increasing demands to prepare students for rapid economic, developmental and social changes for jobs that have not yet been created, for technologies that have not yet been invented and to solve social problems that have not yet been anticipated. So education can equip learners with the agency, the competencies, and the sense of purpose to shape their own lives and contribute to the lives of others. So change is imminent. Uh, for instance, I can mention the aim of the project called the Future of Education Skills Education 2030 of the Organization for Economic Cooperation Development, which is actually aims to support countries to find answers to two far-reaching questions. What knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values will today's students need to, uh, to shape and thrive their world in 2030? And how can instructional systems develop this knowledge and values effectively? 
In this uh, project, uh, they suggest the importance of the concept of learner agency. They propose an overarching learning framework with transformative competencies and review the nature of the knowledge, skills, attitudes, and values that young people will need and possible curriculum design principles. Today also, in the post-COVID pandemic uh, period, we are faced with new paradigm shift and the demand for innovative ways of delivering education is increasing. And this has led to changes in learning and teaching methods. Remote and distance learning in a time of crisis requires thinking out of the box to solve transition challenges creatively. It is a way to find suitable delivery methods in circumstances where the focus must be on rapidly changing needs and limitation of resources such as faculty support and training. So faced with ongoing and unpredictable uh, challenges, schools have been forced to get creative and find new ways to facilitate learning at a distance to sustain student engagement and deliver consistent success. Uh, as the schools shift from an all remote approach now to a combination of virtual and in-person classes, the hybrid model is now used to supplement multiple solutions for student success. So hybrid model, I think is the new normal and the new normal is not going away. Several elements of hybrid learning will remain. And that's why it's important for educators to embrace the hybrid learning shift as a foundational change to be absorbed and implemented into the broader plan and vision for the future of education. Here, I want to clarify uh, that um, there is a confusion between the two terms, hybrid learning and blended learning, uh, which are not identical because in practice, blended learning often takes the form of new initiatives such as uh, project-based learning that add multimedia resources to common coursework and allows students to self-direct some of their learning. So blended learning combines in-person education and online resources. Some activities are done in the classroom and some done online. On the other hand, uh, hybrid classes take uh, on these online tools and provide them to students through remote learning portals and online learning management systems for use outside of the traditional school environment. So hybrid knowledge allows students to take classes both online and in person. Uh, so hybrid learning tools include uh, also learning management system, video conferencing, online exercises. Um, However, I think that some of the biggest pain points that have emerged have less to do with the technology used to facilitate remote learning and hybrid learning itself, and more to do with tech challenge educators tasked with using that technology. And what are the benefits of this hybrid learning? Better student engagement, because some students have grown up in the era of smartphones and tablets and gadgets, and they're likely already comfortable working and learning with the help of technology. Variability for learners, wide variety of uh, media, flexibility for teachers and students, personalizing connection because with hybrid courses, students are able to interact with their peers outside of class hours to support and teach each other in ways that all students can participate. Easy uh, access, um, efficacy, freedom. Uh, and uh, uh, here I want to say some tips uh, for effective uh, hybrid learning success. First of all, simplicity, uh, keep it simple from streamlining the volume of applications and services students use to reducing the number of passwords and logins required to gain uh, access, simplicity, benefits to students, teachers, and parents alike. Emphasize positive relationships between students and teachers because it's important to build meaningful relationships with instructors need with positive energy. Frequent communication will spark student engagement. So a course is, uh, is useless if it's unable to engage students. Use, of course, the technology. And uh, many teachers ask me, what is uh, the best solution? Uh, synchronous, asynchronous, hybrid, blended. I could say that there is no standard recipe. Uh, I always adopt the mixed eclectic models that integrates elements from various learning theory and methodologies. Try to focus your time to help students succeed, stay connected to your students. Um, and uh, uh, here I want to say that also the combination of synchronous and asynchronous teaching is important because with the help of teleconferencing, teacher can discuss the tasks assigned to the children. Assignments and activities given to students should not need special intervention from parents, should respect the material already taught and should not require skills much above the average so that the parents are not forced to intervene as teachers because in this case we will have students in different speeds. And just because an online activity works for your colleagues does not mean that it will work for you 
and your students try new things and even possibly multiple times. But if something is not as effective and meaningful as you want, then move on. Find what works best for your style of teaching and uh, your students. Of course, let's not forget the critical uh, uh, component of authentic assessment, which is very important. Um, that, uh, that could be an online server, an online uh, questionnaire, an essay question, anything. Uh, and uh, um, I want to conclude by saying that technology will not replace great teachers, but technology in the hands of great teachers can be transformational. Thank you very much for your, uh, for your attention. Happy International Day of Education uh, to all. Congratulations, Rania, for the mind-blowing speech of yours. And I think each and every word which you spoke, it came from your heart. And I was literally impressed by few of the good things which you spoke. You spoke about the hybrid model and moreover you spoke that you know we all have adjusted to the new normal as we this is this is a favorite line during pandemic which i have heard a lot but then this is also true that this new normal is not going to leave us okay we discussed about the hybrid model we discussed about the blended learning and everything and especially you touched the innovative ways the creative ways which should be brought in the school to increase the student engagement you discussed about the relationship between the parents teachers and the children including the school itself that how if all all these things are brought in together and in a golden triangle, that is how we will combat. We will combat the academics. We will combat the great teaching ways. And I love the last line of yours, which you said that whatever technologies we use, whatever digital resources we use, but definitely the technology cannot remove the teachers. The teachers are teachers and all any digital tool cannot, you know, remove the teachers the teachers are here to stay and i think all educators you know when we are together we will rock the world with our teaching so congratulations rania for the great wisdom which you have delivered today with this let me come to the next a guest speaker of us who is none other than professor lika basually from georgia and she's an international language center teacher of english and a translator too and she's been into the teaching industry from the last 26 years and uh, it's just a uh, thrilling news to tell that except teaching she doesn't love anything else because she's in love with the curriculum the content and she has a passion to meet all international students and give them more information about these languages and i find her passionate about her lessons and how to make the teaching even more learning you know very very interesting so she has done enough in the teaching field and uh, she's in association with many you know webinars seminars and she's doing great so with this i really welcome lika on the boat and i would like each and everyone to give her a patient hearing so welcome to lika and we are passionate to listen to you so over to lika thank you so much for the great presentation about me uh, I want to happy International Education Day for all the participants and thank you once again that I have the opportunity to be the member of this great family and I want to share my presentation about uh, education. I will share now, I present this presentation. Yes, your screen is visible to us uh is it visible yeah is it this is visible to us you can go ahead please okay okay one minute okay i want to start from the beginning okay changing course transforming education as you know i am uh lika by actually from georgia i am a language teacher for international students now i present this presentation education is uh is uh, it's a course and we are taking the lead uh, for our students the mark uh, we mark the international day of education as our uh, as our work stands at a turning point Gapping equalities a damaged planet, growing polarization and the devastating impact of the global pandemic. 
put us before a gener uh, gener general choice, continue on an unacceptable path or radically change course. This year, International Day of Education, this is the 24th of January, will be a platform of showcase the most important transformations that we have, be, uh, have to be nature to realize everyone fundamental right to education and build more sustainable, inclusive and peaceful future. It will be generate debate around how to strengthen education as a public our doer and common good, how to steer the digital, digital transformation, support teachers, safeguard the planet and unlock the potential in every person, contribute to collective well-being and our shared home. We are com committed to bringing innovation at the core of education system, the schools, dividing excellent learning outcomes for every child, equipping every school to deliver international standard education, enabling unmatched exposed opportunities via exclusive platforms. Then I can share this uh, table of uh, unlimited learning of your ch children, one app for student learning at home, and uh, game, uh, game fight learning, unlimited practice and rewards for your children, exclusive parent sections uh, to partner in your child's learning journey. Also, learning doesn't have to be a tedious, boring task. In fact, uh, uh, the, uh, it shouldn't be one of our lead students' app. Your child, uh, your child gets access to extensive uh, game-filled resources that mark learning fun. They can partake in quizzes and other interactive activities that uh, ensure their continuous growth. Now, as an, as an important of social inclusion, there is a growing need in schools and higher education institutions to provide affordable and accessible models of education transformation to be a wider variety of students. Some universities and uh, edutech companies have already started innovative virtual learning models by offering uh, free online courses and confident programs. While uh, the course uh, curriculum is uh, an even in you know, will evolving area based on current, based on current uh, and the future trends. Uh, teaching learning methodologies is a specialized domain where the experiments are particularly needed. At this juncture, technological in interventions can endure and the value to current pedagogy pedagogical practices. Digital transformation in education can enhance in, uh, instructional learning, uh, especially in higher education by creating a blending learning experience that combines both traditional classroom-based methods and modern technology. Thank you for your attention. I uh, try to have uh, only seven minutes for my presentation. Great. Thank you. Great, Dr. Lika. Great. It, it was an presentation. awesome presentation, rather, and I enjoyed each lovely slide of yours, which has been made by your sincere efforts. You know, you talked about the blended learning. You talked about the collaboration between the traditional teaching methods and the digital resources. And of course, of course, in today's scenario, when we have so much of edutech companies giving us so much of material, online certification course and gamification and everything, I think the child is not bored at all because the this is beyond textbooks, classes and everything, beyond those traditional methods of teaching only through the textbooks. Now the child, you know, the child is quite energized because the child is given so much of digital resources to 
you know for the engagement and i believe if this blended process goes on wherein you know we are able to retain the child's engagement through all this process i believe it can bring a massive change among the studies also and in keeping the engagement of all the children so i believe this was a lovely presentation congratulations dr lika for giving your time and for your great words over here so with this let me uh, go further and introduce our another great esteemed guest speaker who is none other than dr andres alberto so mr Andres has been working as an EFL teacher for more than 10 years in different Ecuadorian high schools, language centers and universities. Besides this, he has participated in an international TESOL course in the Kansas State University in 2013. Also, he has participated in an English teacher training TESOL methodology course awarded by the American Embassy in 2019 and there is enough which I have to speak but with keeping in the time constraints i would request him to rather come on the screen and give his beautiful presentation because the audience and the participate participants are just waiting to listen from the great guest speaker so over to dr edris you may please begin good morning good afternoon hello how are you doing uh, andres rodriguez is my name thank you so much uh, i'm from ecuador uh well today is a special a special day about education so the festival that we are celebrating um uh with this wonderful organization so for me um it's a pleasure to to share with you, you know and also the most important is that we exchange many ideas perspective and we can learn from each other thank you so much dr shelley uh thank you for being part of this uh wonderful group of educating uh, network of educators now okay so i will i want to introduce a little bit more about uh, how the education changes in this time um from the time from the moment that COVID 19 the the pandemic um, changes the world in different ways so many people uh students educators uh, family representative uh, they ask many questions so we have more questions than answers so that's true you now so one of the questions that we can make and we expect that the future will uh, consider is that how will the case how how will we be educated uh, will uh, schools uh, be open for people will return to class and how will we be will be studying now so there are many ways that we can study you now so distant learning blended learning um uh, schooling or when people return to return back to return go back to school so uh so those are more questions that we can ask you know but let me tell you that there are some factors or ideas that we can share in order to explain how the education will constantly change and the first idea is about um to build up a big global citizen community awareness you know? So in terms of in terms of leadership and communication, okay, learners and learners and non-learners, because we are not talking about the school, we are talking about people in general, no. Um in the internet allow people to see the world in different way, to connect synchronically, asynchronically, and what is happening around the world. So we learn more from the news that they are presented in the internet rather than the the the, the traditional media from TV or radio that we commonly used to to watch or or, let, or hear, it. but now how can how can the global citizen awareness um, can uh, support um, the leadership and the local people that they want to support their communities or or they or they, or they can visit around the world? You know? So. Uh, we need to be well informed and and we also have to be educated with uh international values you no know? and think about the world is as one you no know? so the same thing that happened in pakistan in bangladesh or in ecuador in another part of the world we have the same problems we are challenging we have some uh things that we can work together in order to um 
solve this situation. No? So that's the idea, you no? Know? That we have we have to see the world as one, and education is part of the uh, of uh, of the of that issue, you no? Know, in order to solve, you no. Know? So education is not isolated. Education is part of the the cultural awareness that we have to um, uh, develop this uh, global citizen awareness, you no. Know? So, on second place, we will mention the post-pandemic tools for education. So. In this moment, um, I'm going to share with you uh, one of the slides, uh, please. And I will explain you something. Um, okay, sorry, in a second, please. Okay, um, yeah. The intention of the post pandemic is not talking about only resources, methodology coming back to the school. No? So the idea is that we educators and also students and all the people who belong to the community, to the educational community, be a better version of ourselves. No? So the things we learn from the past, the circumstances that affect, uh, affected us, and also we can bring this, okay? For example, many people uh, ask when to return to, to school. Others don't want to return to school for, you know, may, any reason, you no, know, the sanitary, the healthy situation, they stop studying at home. Um, there are some circumstances in the poorest area of the world that people want to stay home and the internet connection are difficult though. No? So, I want to share this quote. This is about um, everyone who, remem who remembers his own education remember, remembers teachers, not methods and techniques. The teacher is the heart of the education system. So this quote by Sidney Cook, okay? Um, I'm pointing out the way how the global citizens, okay, uh, our awareness, okay, can be figure out with the, 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 the norms, the values, and the thing is, as, as citizens, we can feel the education and, and we can support no? in, a, in a more humanistic way, no? with values, more uh, to be more empathetic with our students. So um, through the time, um, we, we remember, for example, our, our um, old teachers that we had in the, when we were studying at school. So the same thing ha will happen when I want a student, and uh, so the the current students they will rem remember us, no. So no, no for the uh, for the knowledge or the things that we transmit. Just it's just for the action we took in that moment, for the solidarity, for the love we brought, we brought the compassion and the things we share with them. So this is the idea of um, talking about the um, <coughs> this education, okay. So on third place, we are talking about the sustainable development. Now, the sustain in, in education, the sustainable development are um, we are not talking about only uh, online resources, equipment, building, uh, schools. No, so we are talking about intangible things. No, intangible things. No, things that will keep and endure through the time. No, so what I mentioned before is that. Uh, many things can transform education, okay? So the same problems or the same thing that we that we took from different countries, th th those those are the inquiries that we can uh, perform, we can uh, do research in order to solve these situations. So the sustainable development brings uh, these things you know, that we can keep enduring for the time, you know? So, we will see good result. We will see good results when we um, when we see our students when they graduate or they post graduate, or, or, or when they are people who become part of the community, or they can uh, give their best in order to solve the the problem. So that's the idea, you know, that we can make people that they have a cultural citizen awareness, and also they use the technology in favor of solving problems. So that's the, the post-education, the post-modern education that we need to uh, 
uh, that we expect that it happened, no? Okay, so finally, the, the last component that I want to share with you is the leadership in education, no? So, and the leadership are not only um, the directives or the authorities. So everybody, in terms of communication, we can follow, we can um, uh, take action as leaders. We educators in our part, in our role, we, we are working on, on, on leadership now because many people, uh, they are observing us, they are following us and they take decisions. Sometimes they take decisions when we observe, okay, uh, the teacher is a role model, the teacher does this, the teacher, okay, is talking about this. So uh, it's, it's more that, it's more our actions than the, that, that's the, rather than the words we say. So that, that, that's very wise no? in the way that we act. You know? So in brief, so if we are constantly um, um, following, okay, some procedure for professional development, we create a big team of um, global citizen communities of, the, of people, of educators, learners, okay, with values, with norms to support, Okay, and it endures for the time with sustainable development and also with a guidance, with an effective guidance or a disruptive leadership. Now, the disruptive leadership are the leaders, okay, that sometimes we seem like they're, they're crazy, but they took action and they easily, and they, took, uh, they take quick decisions in order to make the things happen. Now. So those are the leaders that we need in education. Thank, thank you so much, Dr. Shelley, or Dr. Mohamed, the founder of this organization, for the opportunity to share with you and bring up this uh, community and learn from you. Thank you. Very, very, very warm presentation and nicely brought up, you know. You started with constant, you know, anxieties and queries, which were developed during COVID-19, 2019, from 19 to 20 to 21. And this is the start of 2022. But I think, you know, the problems, the things, it is still persist. But the best thing which I loved in your presentation was the slide which you uh, brought forth. And that was this, whatever happens, but then teachers, teachers ultimately, they are the heart of the education network, you know, and that is true. That that's true because we all are educators over here and we believe it. And I have a small example to share in front of you. Like on 22nd January, I celebrated my birthday, but it was more than a moment when, you know, 20 years back, you know, the children, the children whom I taught, they wished me from all across the globe. They are now doctors, mm -hmm. engineers, mm -hmm. IAS, and whatever, whatever countries they are working, but then they remembered the teacher, you know, the teacher of theirs, and it was indeed a great thing. And that is what, you know, the slide was so heart touching, you know, and of course, the teachers, the educators, they are indeed, they are indeed the heart and soul of our education system. So I second you, Dr. Enrins, for the beautiful presentation. And yes, you talked about certain other good things also. That together, if we, you know, collaborate, mm -hmm. then and then only we can bring the change in the education network. And I believe, I believe if all of us have this positive the outlook then and then only we can combat we can combat on this and yes we don't know we don't know when the COVID ends or whether it will be ending or not but yes if the positive approach is there if we all are united you know god knows COVID will not defeat us but we definitely will be defeating the COVID so congratulations once again for the lovely presentation of yours and with this now I invite another great mm -hmm. guest speaker of ours Thanks. and I am really honored and thrilled to introduce him to you because I also had a great connect with him so I'm referring to none other than Professor Dr. Muhammad Nabudil Hassan I believe you know, a warm congratulations and a warm welcome to him. So uh, he is also known as Dr. Mahmood and some call him Dr. Hassan also. And he's from Dhaka, Bangladesh. And uh, he is in education management and administration. That is his professional field. And at present, he is a principal at Defertil International School, Dhaka, Bangladesh. 
and also Professor of CML of Bangladesh, and he is associated with great uh, institutions, and he is doing great as far as his engagement is there because he is even writing, editing, educating, and motivating public speaking, and also on the moral development and the social front also. So he also has a great connect, and he is doing a noble job and a noble uh, things, you know. And I have listened to his lectures, you know, twice or thrice, and he's a fabulous speaker. And today also, I think the audience might be waiting with the bated breath to listen him out. But before I request him to speak, there is a small request which I want to place to all 110 attendees over here. Can I request all of you to kindly come on the video mode and to be live here so that each and every one, you know, we, we connect with each other, we look at each other expressions and this will be a warm camaraderie and a warm social connect so just a small request from my side if everyone switch on their videos come on the video mode and try try to appraise each other you know try to motivate each other because it is today our day our day of educators and i think it will be warm enough if we just give a small tribute to each one of us by sharing different thumbs up, emojis, smiling, smileys, and all beautiful appreciation in the chat box. Thank you, thank you once again for all those who have kept the camera on, for making the session even more interesting with this energizing things. And thank you, thank you. You are a lovely audience and a great participants also. So with this, I invite none other than Professor Dr. Mahmoud Hassan, all welcome to you. The stage is yours. Yes, with double thumbs up, rock the show. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shelley. Um, I am lost in a word. I am lost. That is, I can I, I cannot express what I should say now. Seeing the huge number of the great scholars from different countries of the world, today we are celebrating a great day which is the great heart for the whole nation of the whole country, whole world. So I will not mention the names of different people. They are very, very close friends to me, virtually, physically, and also they are very great scholars. In front of them, it's a great pleasure and hearty happiness that I am here with you to share my exposures, my ideas regarding the day, day of the education, international education. So if you allow me just I like to share my screen so that we can I can uh, take very few minutes and that will be uh, a help to, to reduce our time. Okay, in fact, uh, this is the slides, this is the uh, professional slides and which uh, I will not go through all the things. The topic is today changing courses and transforming education very very big point and this is the visible and obviously remarkable stage after the pandemic i mean in this new normal era arena and at this moment transformation and transition everybody knows what is transition and what is transformation i in fact will not say what is transition and transformation in a short that is transition means the process of changing something and transformation means the act of changing. That means the process of which are eliminated for changing the systems and which is the great required at this moment, especially for the pandemic. So I will just share very few slides. All the slides, if I take them, it will take much time, which I will not be permitted there. So, uh, what is the in fact the transition transition how we can transit our education if we can point out then very shortly i can say transformation in pedagogical actions since it's the concern to the education education always transformative every moment everything is transformed but due to pandemic the way it has transformed that is radically and dramatically and that is really, really appreciable that the world has advanced into the thousands of the years in terms of learning and ad adapting a lot of the technologies. So what are the actions can be taken for transforming education? First one, curriculum in action. 
you know, the courses are changed. The many, many universities, established universities, school, colleges, they have changed their curriculum. They have added very, very new things which are really adaptable for the children, for the parents, and for the other teachers and educators also. The transformation learning in action, how to learn, learn how to learn, that will be another action it has started. Then equity in action, that there should be action in the equal platform, equal way, equal system. Then fourth number, learning designs in action. The how I am going to teach, now I am, how I am going to learn, that should be well designed in the perspective, the modern education, I mean the modern technology oriented education. Then collective participations in actions in the first time, we have heard about inclusive education. Inclusive education already, the professor has described everything I am not going to describe. Collective participation, collaborative participation, very important for transforming the educational systems. Next, if we come, how the transformation occurred, how the trans transition occurred in the educational perceptions. If we can point out, we can see Transition of institution from campus to the home space, you know, we cannot go to the campus, rather we are sitting in, at our home and students at their home and we are teaching and educating the students and we are learning each other. The transition from the hard copy to the soft copy, there is no book, there is nothing now, the soft copy are used at this moment. Transition of teaching methods from one size fits all to individualized and differential learnings. Then transition of responsibility from school to the home. Transition of learning evaluations from structural exams to the creative assessment. Number six, transition of traditional exams to the Googleable online exam systems. Transition of teachers skill from traditional pattern to the updated patterns. So these are the transitions and what are the transition afterward happen for the transformation? These are the things is like, if we can see what are the transformation required after transformation of the education, what are the things are required? The specialist, educationist, and the uh, scientists of the education, they have mentioned few points which are very, very important. Education tools are very required at this moment. There is no hard copy. There is no campus visit. There is no campus learning and teaching. So things are very required. What are those? There are very, very nine to 10 tools which are very required for us from the education. First one, artificial intelligence. You know, I am not going to describe. Artificial intelligence is the most required intelligence and the tools for teaching and learning confirmation. Second one, emotional intelligence. Very, very important. Cognitive computing, blockchain, virtual reality. If we can see every man, every teacher, every educator, every student, people, they are having the emotional intelligence. But how to utilize it? How to work it? How to activate them? These are very important. The capacity to be aware or control or express one's emotions and also handle interpersonal relationship judiciously and empathetically. Very, very important, you know, that is, I am a learner, I am a teacher, that I have to understand the intelligence of the other, I have to control, I have to, I, I have, to have the capacity how to control the other's emotions. The students, what they need, what are their temptations, what are temperament, temperament, everything we should know. It. Emotional intelligence is very required in, in case of the education, educator, in case of the teachers, in case of the learners, in case of the students. Then cognitive computing, it describes the technology platforms that broadly speaking are based on scientific disciplines of artificial intelligence. So these are all, you know, virtual reality, which I want to mention here, why the virtual reality is required. You know, everyone is here related to the teaching or production of teaching, production of education. Then can we see it in our campus? We cannot see. If any visitors want to see, then we have to prepare the virtual campus where the outsider, even the 
the last corner of the board, everyone can see my institution virtually. The virtual reality is very important. Then if we go, the robots, you know, the board is now already started to run by the robots. In many industries, robots are working. So human resource management are going to be day by day diverted to the robotic activities, robot boards. This is the great phenomena and great transformation after this pandemic. Then augmented reality, big data, then cyber security. I have all the things, but I don't have the security in the cyber. So I cannot move myself forward. So these are the basic tools which are very important for confirming and transforming the education after changing and transition of the education, especially in this new normal arena, new normal era. Then uh, if we see the uh, video of this one, then you can understand very well what are the things are going to be addressed for this one. I cannot show at this moment, it will take time. But there are so many things which are required to transform education. Before that, we have to be confirmed and habituated to adapt all the technologies which I have, which are coming, coming forward, which are to be seen in the next, we have to adapt ourselves. So that will help us transform the education in the right dimension, in the right approaches. At last, since time is very less, I cannot explain more. You see, the Viktor Frankl told one thing, man does not simply exist, but always decides what his existence will be, what he will become the next moment by the same token, every human being has the freedom to change at any instance. That means changing is the only things to develop the education to improve the education. In the fourth industrial revolution, you see the education for this is told only to improve and adapt the any kind of the modern technology for the better education. Finally, George Bernard Shaw has uttered the single quotation, progress is impossible without change and those who cannot change their minds cannot change anything. So above all, for the transformation, for the transition, I have to change my attitudes, I have to change my, uh, my mind, then I can change the whole world. That's the Nelson Mandela has told. The education is such a weapon by which you can change the world. So this is the time, the time has come to change the whole world. After the pandemic, in this new normal age, I have to change our, my module, I have to change my system, I have to change my teaching methodology, then I have to change the whole educational system and the whole educational world. So thank you so much. I will not speak more. And this will be very shortly. Since time is very short, it needs many, many minutes. So yeah, it is not possible at this moment. So thank you so much again. I am really, really grateful to the uh, Global Education Network founder for having such platform where all the scholars are gathered and they can share themselves with a lot of the views and ideas. So thank you so much, especially my older friends. I am not uttering the names and have a very good time, very good moment. Happy International Education Day. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Professor Dr. Mahmoud Hassan. And especially I'll just rewind from the last slide of yours, the great, great George Bernard Shaw, you know, the change, you know, unless and until we can't change, we cannot progress you know and that is why you know even rania insisted in her speech that we need to be the change makers and indeed all global educators who are sitting over here are the change makers and they will do all they will go overboard rather to bring an evolution in the chain but yes of course i'll not leave unless and until i'll mention my favorite slide of yours which was all about the transformation the transition and yes how lovely you have brought the points over there you know the lovely infrastructure the designer schools and buildings wherein you know we all met all the educators and the children you know the blackboards the textbooks the notebooks the pens and everything the school assemblies lunch break playgrounds and everything from there you know we have transformed to the cozy home of us the cozy 
cozy comfort corners of theirs you know so instead of those blackboards and textbooks we all have switched over to the digital mediums you know the ebooks are there the digital pens are there the digital pens have rather replaced the red pen of all the educators okay so the library the library is changed to all ebooks the e text over there and moreover you know when we talked about the safety security and responsibility of the children the school management was liable but now instead of the school management everything the responsibility lies on the parents on the home and everything because the child is sitting there at home the parents are more responsible rather than the teachers or the management over there so how lovely the transition is over there the e attendance the e certificates the online teaching the online books and you know the hybrid model and everything and also you touched about the robotics you touched about the artificial intelligence and everything whatever we are roping in there at the end but yes this is the change and i would rather appreciate and would call all of us all of us global educators sitting over here and we are proud to call ourselves the change makers and yes the change makers on a run to make the society even more positive and also you know creative so that we need to bring the change in the world and defeat this corona because i don't know what is this corona i don't know what is this pandemic unless and until all change makers are over there and to give the positive things to all the children over here so with this i appreciate the time and the deliverable which you have given to this uh, event of ours congratulations and with this i would move to the next speaker the next great guest speaker of us who is none other than professor jovanovic from croatia uh, who teach history and the croatian language uh, a gen member and the country coordinator working in elementary school so can we have professor jovanovic over here with us yes i'm here a warm welcome I, yes thank you hello and good evening to everyone I want to thank you to Jen for this uh, great opportunity to make uh, this uh, celebrating of education day and I would like to share my presentation. So uh, this topic, changing course and transforming education. I would like to talk about uh, uh, modern teaching and uh, teaching uh, scenarios. Uh, so modern teaching is based on idea uh, of an active students who through research and interaction with other students acquires new knowledge and develops their skills. The role of the teacher changes from the traditional role in which the teacher was almost the only source of knowledge and unquestioned authority. To the modern role in which the teacher becomes the leader, advisor and moderator of teaching activities in the classroom. So the tra traditional writing preparation has already made templates for the lesson. Passage. Uh, but uh, it, uh, it is replaced by multiple proposed materials, activities and ideas that can be applied in many ways, dependent on the capabilities, prior knowledge and needs of students. And this is our teaching scenarios. As Isaac Isom said, the education is not something you can finish. We learn all life. The level of performance complexity of the teaching scenario roughly corresponds to the level of complexity of digital competence. Competences consist of knowledge, skills, and attitudes. This is five areas which we are have to uh, be uh, competence, information and date, literacy, communication and collaboration, digital content creation, safety, and problem solving. The contribution of teaching scenarios is in designing activities that in addition to the implementing ICT and connecting with the real life examples, motivate students and make teaching imaginative and attractive. In doing so, the specifics of each subject are respected. 
the modern school uh, is a sorry school to, for sorry to uh, yes. intervene professor i think yes. the slides are not moving if you could please oh. uh, moving the move the slides please okay yeah, please uh, we are still at slide one. Oh, slide one. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Is um, now okay? Do you see the second no, no. slide? We are just at slide one only. Only? Okay, I will stop to share and share again. Yeah, please. It's now visible, the second slide. Yes. Now it is visible to okay. us. Modern teaching and teaching scenarios. Yes, yes. Yeah, please carry on. So this is the third. Do you see the third? A traditional, traditional written right. preparation. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, this is the level of performance complexity of the teaching scenario, roughly corresponding to the level of complexity of digital competence. Competences no, consist of knowledge, skills, and attitudes. And I said this is uh, five areas that we have to be competence, informant information, in data literacy, communication and collaboration, digital content creation, safety, and problem solving. So the contribution of teaching scenarios is in designing activities that, in addition, to implementing ICT and connecting with the real life examples, motivate students and make teaching imaginative and attractive. In doing so, the specific of each subject are respected. The modern school is a school for all students. It is inclusive and allows each student to progress according to his abilities, whether he is gifted or his learning difficulties. The role of teacher in teaching is to make students capable of individuals for further actions in society. Modern learning is essential for generation growing up in the digital world. Students of digital generations are also need to accept that knowledge is a power, which is what contributes to a better society and world today. We need to encourage students to contribute to a better world with their knowledge and digital skills. For each student with disabilities, it's necessary to envisage that will enable him to participate in all activities so that he can achieve to set outcomes. Before performing activities from the teaching scenario, it's important to ensure some prerequisites such as a spatial adjustment of classroom, a space, and workspace and temporal adjustment of activities in the scenario in relation to the abilities and difficulties of students in classroom. And that's all for me. I would like to end of this word. A teacher takes a hand, opens a mind and touch a heart. So happy education day to everyone. Great, great, Professor. It was indeed a very short and crisp presentation of yes. yours. And the slides, the second last slide, mm -hmm. which you have showcased in front of us. Yes, teachers, you are amazing. You are pretty. So yes, it, reminds pretty amazing. Me, it reminds me of all, all the good things, all the rapport which we share among all the children of us. And yes, you talked about to develop those cozy areas, workspace among the classroom wherein the child is given all those creative uh, space to develop the activities, to work on uh, the areas, to work on so that, you know, there is no curb to the education, but yes, the education should go on so that the child start enjoying the education. It should not be a burden on the head. Oh my God, I need to go to school. Oh my God, I hate studies. I hate notebooks. No, rather than implement and make teaching so interesting. You know, teach in such manner, use such tools, flashcards, some technology, some resources, something so or other, so that your classroom becomes alive. Children starts loving. You know, they should fall in love with the books. They should fall in love with the academics, and that is then only the role of the educators over here is successful. So, congratulations for the great show, for the great presentation. With this, I now come to the seventh guest speaker of us, who is none other than a very 
popular, I believe. And she is so socially active in almost all the platforms. And I also follow her post. So I'm introducing none other than Dr. Muthumena from Indonesia. A very warm welcome to her. So Dr. Muthumena, she's an assistant professor at University at Mandha in West Sulawesi, Indonesia. She is a lecturer, a global speaker, a researcher, and an international leader. Now, some of her achievements at her university is that she's a chairman of the Indonesian language department at the teacher training and education faculty. She was in public relations at her university. She was the director of Women's Center Studies and deputy director of the Quality Assurance Unit and also at her university. She is now the deputy director of the Language and Character Development Institute at her university. And in the current year, she is active as an international member, international coordinator conference and international trainer. And I think Thing. it will be more than enough if I go and keep on sharing her achievement because the list is too long okay so keep in a scenario with the time constraint of the webinar I will not speak much but yes the audience are waiting to listen to her so the floor is all yours the stage is all yours over to Dr. Muthmena we give you a cordial welcome and let's hear you out thank you so much good night from Indonesia uh, first of all, I want to say thank you uh, to uh, the founder of Global Education Network, my brother Mo Hyudin Buyan, uh, the uh, collaboration with uh, Nadarat Kopik as, as uh, organizing committee, my beautiful moderator, Dr. Shelly Bis, happy to meet you again here, and all of the keynote speaker and all of the participation participants who are attending in this a wonderful uh, a meeting in our special day, Happy International Education Day. Allow me to share my screen. I know uh, I have time only um, seven minutes to- Dear professor, <laughs> yes, you have seven yeah. minutes. Uh, but we'll yeah, give yeah. you three, four <laughs> minutes more. Thank you so much. So, yeah. Await me. Yeah. Yeah, again, uh, in the Happy International Day of Education 2020. Uh, we will see about what is actually the scenario for the next future of our education. Uh, we are still um, looking out about uh, the condition of how COVID is over actually. <laughs> so that's why today is, um, we are still um, doing uh, namely uh, physical distancing and the social distancing. So a little bit about my national and international organization and also my research ID. So feel free to join and visit my uh, research there. Yeah, my name is Mutmaina. I have actually mentioned by the moderator. Thank you so much. Uh, let's have a look about the acceleration about the trans digital transformation on education sector. I am totally agree with uh, the keynote speaker uh, from me, uh, my professor Mahmoudul Hassan, about the open minded, open mindset about right now the condition. Uh, we must be. Um, be adapt with this uh, new trend about, uh, yeah, today is because uh, everything by delivering by internet or technology. And totally we are still uh, have so many challenges and difficult how we are integrating the technology, so many application, and then so many platforms that we must uh, do to transforming or how to deliver in our virtual classroom. So, well, I will share my uh, experience, actually what I'm doing in this, um, uh, in this condition. This, uh, yeah, I totally agree with uh, our professor Mahdul Hassan. We must change the way we are teaching. So to the Dr. Soja Juvanovak about the modern teaching also, yeah, we must be integrating the technology. So this is based on my experience, my observation. I divided into the five, the highlight issue and trends in 
uh, on the education uh, sector. The first one about injective artificial intelligence in education. So we must be adept with this um, software because this software actually uh, really have a benefit to help uh, us as educator. So education transformation, we are right now familiar with this a term about remote teaching, virtual classroom, this change education, and also we must be adopt with information communication and the technology culture. And in Indonesia, specific in my country, we are still uh, fighting how we are giving training to the uh, teacher, how they are changing the way they are teaching right now. Or we support with um, the, uh, the technology because most of the people in Indonesia, most of the, uh, the, the educator or teacher in Indonesia still low in uh, technology, how they are uh, teaching, use technology, and then how they are uh, training their students to use this technology. So we must be redesigned the curriculum. Yeah. Like in my country, we are have a policy from our Ministry of Education, we design our curriculum. And then uh, in this year, we'll be launching about a prototype uh, curriculum. I think this in we will be um, a make other educator, uh, all of us. But the core actually, this is the simple about again and again, the education transformation, the digital transformation. So infuse hybrid and blended environment. This is uh, actually when we uh, say this is hybrid and blended, it is like easy, but actually to practice in the uh, reality, this is a very difficult. Still, we have so many challenges to do that. So infuse smart digital classroom management. And this is uh, about infuse smart digital classroom management, how we are manage our classroom, how we are creating the fun activities, the enjoyable activities for the student with the minimum minimum interactional design. So we do really hope uh, we can get the make it simple our interaction in the classroom because you know to uh, delivering the material between face to face classroom and then. Uh, into the virtual classroom or maybe into blended, this is not easy. So many, so many, uh, so many uh, responsibility we must uh, do in the classroom. We are, as educators, we are teaching and then we are monitoring, observing, and then we must be um, explain so many uh, tools for the student or we choose one of the tools for the student. So that's why for the smart digital classroom management, come back again with your student condition. Maybe in Indonesia familiar by using, for example, only WhatsApp, and maybe in another country familiar with Microsoft or Blackboard application or platform. We don't know, just come back with your student and your condition. So about this is the triple quantum. Let me uh, introduce to you about the triple quantum, namely quantum learning, quantum teaching, and then quantum technology. Actually, this is a comeback to the namely uh, teacher pedagogical content knowledge. Actually, when we are uh, apply quantum learning, this is we are support about how we are learning right now uh, by use this uh, technology. So many resources right now. Quantum teaching, the way we are teaching, we must change. We must uh, uh, practice, namely, um, student-centered learning approach. And quantum technology, of course, we are in the digital era. So mobilize e-learning and then uh, about the mobile learning, this is for digital support that we know. Right now about the technology, this is not about between parents and a bit between a student and a, a teacher, but also uh, this is um, a health effect or uh, the, the technology also uh, need to be, um, uh, how to say, that the parent and the staff in, in, in the university also must be uh, use this uh, technology or familiar with this uh, learning management system. Uh, maybe uh, you can uh, use LMS, for example. So we must be adapted with this uh, condition. 
The net about the cyber doggy, this is one of the theory, the theory if you wanted to combine between pedagogy and the technology. But our homework right now, this is not about this technology itself, but also about the metacognitive skill. How we are uh, facilitate and motivate the student to increase their uh, metacognitive skill, knowing how to learn. They have autonomy in learning. They have self-direct and self-determined in learning. Because you know, when we are integrating the technology actually have so many benefits, but in another student, if they don't have autonomy, they don't have self-direct and self-determined in learning, they will be lose their concentration and then not get the benefit of the technology itself. So freedom to learn, because right now we are, yeah, everything, we can be in everywhere, anytime and anywhere, like today, like tonight, we are a meet here uh, from many country, we are together sharing and learn each other. So the last about digital vaccine, let me show you about the condition today. We are in the society 5.0, but actually so many country like in my country, we are in the developing country. And then, you know, a 50% area in Indonesia, we are in the blank spot, no internet connection. So what is actually we can do with them? This is our challenge. So we need to be, um, if you want, if we are today talking about the hybrid, the blended learning. I think this is not fair because there are some of the area in the blank spot don't know about this one. So that's why we must be sharing together and then giving the motivation for all of the educator, whatever they are, so we support them to uh, introduce this is about the digital transformation in education. So industrial revolution 4.0, this is about um, the 21st century skill because right now we are in the digital era to support the 21st century skill. Uh, the student must be have a normally the higher order thinking skill. The way they are thinking must be creativity and innovation uh, to survive in this uh, era. But actually, uh, the problem to support the, uh, or to pursue the 21st century skill about the, yeah, the digital, uh, the, the literacy skill, not only about digital skill, but the literacy skill, we must, um, how to increase the student, uh, the, their literacy skill. So to support the 21st century skill and then the technology, we have, we have so many challenges and homework. Actually, when we are um, read about or we are presentation about the theory, this is very easy. We say that this is the technology very uh, benefit for us, but what about when we are doing or we are practice in the, our classroom? I think we have a challenge for that. So, about the our uh, teaching, why we must uh, change the way we are teaching because you know that our students, they are the generation C. So we do really hope all of the educators right now, um, we, uh, we must fight thing and then uh, we must be uh, increase our uh, knowledge about the way we are teaching and then support uh, the student with, uh, based on their uh, need. What is actually the student need uh, right now about uh, our learning and teaching method? Have you evaluate your uh, teaching and your learning process? So that's why we cannot be doing some of the reflection. Maybe from the teacher side, we cannot say this is a very easy or this is have benefit. But for the student, they, they have so many uh, characteristics. The student, they are unique. They have a uh, different learning style. So how we can uh, be uh, manage all of them into the one of the interactional model or we design the activities that all of the students have their um, fair in the uh, learning and teaching uh, process. Yeah, this is the humanity in learning and teaching process. Yeah, you know, because in education, not only about the transfer knowledge, but also we have a responsibility uh, to develop their um, behavior, attitude, character, value, and so many. 
And this is some of the example of blended learning models. I don't know what about this. Uh, we are talking about the blended learning, but uh, so many the teacher actually have a problem about how they are used this technology, how to connect it all of them to support the student training on a century skill. Let's have a look some of these, uh, the differentiate between a face-to-face -face learning and then online uh, learning. Uh, this is about the online learning, uh, totally about full uh, online, but when we are blended, we have some of the criteria of blended learning like rotation model. Rotation model this is divided into five here about uh, station rotation model, lab rotation model, flipper classroom model, and individual rotation model. Everything this model is good, but come back again. This is not about the teacher one, but we, we, we cannot be we cannot be ask our student what is actually they want. They are wanted to blend it or they are wanted to be uh, in hybrid learning environment. Just remind about the five case, 21 century skill and behavior that the teacher need to think. Yeah, everything will be uh, digital. We lose the books right now. Yeah. So this is, um, there are five. Uh, learning is no longer a solo activities anymore. The teacher is not, not the longer the only person in teaching. And I totally believe that. Learning is no longer passive. Books are just the start and teaching is then beyond the classroom. That's why we must um, organize our learning and teaching process into the happy learning environment. Don't forget about this. This is related to the emotional intelligence because the student, they are, they, they are more happy in the classroom. They will be more engaged and then they will be get the excellent achievement. We hope so. So let's have a look about the differentiate. This is the, uh, the, the technology, the digital technology that we know that uh, sometimes the educator or the student asks why we must know so many application or so many technology or platform. Because this is, for example, the, the, the teaching um, uh, technology because we know that uh, this, all of this technology have different uh, purpose. For example, in the label one, for recall, this is uh, related to the Bloom taxonomy, to remember and understanding, you must choose the right action and the right activities. If you ask your student in this condition, in this uh, activities like identify, you just ask them to memorize, you just ask them to tell, recall their, their uh, knowledge. This is, you just in this, uh, the lower order thinking scale, very low. To support the 21 century scale, we must in this uh, area, we must ask them the way they are thinking must be creative and doing the innovation. So let's, uh, that's why we must change the way we are teaching right now, because to prepare our student with the 21 century skill, let's start with your class today, right now. So one of the solution or the alternative uh, to uh, designing your classroom, for example, this is based on the entertainment theory, entertainment and education, when you are collaboration between education and entertainment, like by using games, or by using a film, movie, this is, it will be, it will be help you to create your uh, fun and enjoyable classroom. For example, by using game-based learning, why this is very important, because this is effective engagement, uh, behavioral engagement, cognitive engagement, and social cultural engagement. Everything will be covered and then with the help you to manage the differentiate learning style in your classroom. And then let's have a look what about the entertainment as the future, uh, have a contribution to the future of education because uh, this is the uh, entertainment actually uh, related to the Blum taxonomy. Uh, the Blum taxonomy, remembering, understanding, 
uh, yeah, remembering, understanding until they are uh, the student have innovation and doing uh, and uh, doing um, collaboration. Uh, based on my research, actually, uh, this is my research when I I uh, use for implementation funtainment or a fun activities edu based on education and entertainment. I use this is a YouTube as um, a content material by using a game and then a song or film, but totally this is the student of feel they have uh, they have argument that it will be help them for the uh, the 21 century skill, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and the uh, creativity or doing innovation. Not only about by using uh, edutainment, this is, uh, we can also use ICT information communication and technology. Actually, this is have mentioned by uh, Dr. Selja Jovanovak about the modern teaching and the modern technology. About the ICT, information communication and the technology. Why we use this? Because the student right now, they are the Gen Z, they are familiar with this ICT, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, blog, and YouTube. So that's why, because we know the characteristic of our student today, that's why we must uh, designing our classroom, designing our activities, our material is on the student a characteristic, the student condition. So this is the example of my classroom. When I use artificial intelligence in my classroom, Great, great, Dr. Butumeno. And then about virtual reality. Mm, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I use in this, uh, I use in my classroom here and then I hope this is a support that uh, the student 21 center skill. They are doing communication each other. They are doing collaboration. They are building teamwork. And then they are uh, have a critical thinking to uh, have uh, uh, to solve the, the problem by using the game, for example. And the last, they are doing the innovation. The innovation, they are, uh, after they are uh, playing with this uh, virtual reality or uh, by using artificial intelligence they will be have uh, their argumentation or giving their opinion about uh, this uh, the material because the virtual reality or an artificial intelligence this is the material in our learning and teaching process so what about if the student don't have internet connection what should we do we must go on that's why that's why uh, we must identify what is actually our student condition. If you are going to another city, for example, don't have internet connection, we must prepare with this. Uh, yeah, maybe this is, you know, this is the conventional or traditional model, uh, but Dr. I think this is will, uh, still effective. Yeah. So the no, last, no. my conclusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, technology will not replace the teacher. I believe that, but we use technology to make our learning and teaching process to be more uh, effective, active, and efficient. Thank you for having me and listening to me. Wow, that was indeed, indeed a great, great presentation. We all were just glued to your slides and hearing you out with rapt attention because you gave us enough for, you know, the blended learning and all those digital technologies and everything, you know. Thanks a lot for sharing your wisdom out over here because it is such an important conference and we were all thrilled to have your knowledge amongst us. So thank you for giving us your precious time and your knowledge and to be part of this global conference. You know, we were rather thrilled. And uh, uh, with this, I would really want to appreciate all my alluring attendees and participants over here. You know, it is two hours and 10 minutes and we are still rocking the conference. So thank this you. is the success of the conference. And I want each one of us to appreciate, to clap for ourselves. We are rocking, you know, two hours 10 minutes and still the last speaker is there but yes i would request all my attendees 
and I love your patience here. Just after this last speaker, we will be sharing the attendance link to all of you. Please stay connected and listen to all the global leaders. So with this, I invite the last speaker of the day today, who is none other than Professor Melissa from Italy. She teach Good mathematics evening. to high school and uh, uh, she is a Neopod certified educator, verified educator on Kahoot 2, Kahoot Academy, you know, and she works with coding and gamification. And I believe she has all the updates on new technologies and teaching methodologies and digital tools, which has been used to promote learning. So I believe uh, the presentation which she is going to give us will be a great. And I request all of us to stay tuned and listen to the last great speaker of today's conference so that the knowledge which she gives us is taken by us also and yes at last before saying anything please keep your cameras on and give us a beautiful gestures warm smiles and warm compliments to keep the session rocking so over to ma'am yes please okay good evening i present you my work uh, okay Good evening, all. Good afternoon, good morning, and good evening. Today, on the occasion of the International Day of Education, I want to present you a teaching methodology that I consider very useful and innovative, especially in this period of, of blended learning. I want to speak to you about the uh, flipped classroom methodology um, as one of the most popular trends in education. But uh, why this is uh, unique uh, for education, uh, the flipped classroom methodology? A flipped, a flipped classroom is a type of blended learning where students are introduced to content at home and practice working through, through it at school. This is the reverse of the more common practice of introducing new content at school, then a singing homework and projects to be completed by the students independently at home. It's a part of blended learning with asynchronous and synchronous activities. First, the students uh, study topics. Secondly, in uh, the classroom, they apply the knowledge by solving the problems during the classroom, they apply the knowledge and the tutorial activities. They learn by doing and by interaction with others. Several pedagogical means are used leading to a hybridization of courses. Uh, uh, in, the, in the common flipped classroom scenario, okay. Uh, students might watch pre-recorded videos uh, then at home, then come to school to do their homework and with questions uh, and at least some background knowledge. We recommend that you motivate the student uh, to watch the video at home by adding a brief description of the video, explaining what you want them to get out of watching it, posing some critical questions for them, uh, to consider why they watch this can form the basis of the of in classroom um, solution, including a quiz to see students' understanding. Uh, the concept behind the flipped classroom is to, to retain what students have access to the resources they need most. If the problem is that students need help doing the work rather than being introduced to the new thinking behind the work, then the solution to flip the classroom takes to reverse that pattern. What's the simple, simplest way to think about a flip, flip the classroom? The students do homework at school. Put another way, students preview content at home and then extend the learning and or practice at school. But don't be fooled. Merely flip the, your homework doesn't mean you are unlooking all the benefits of flipped learning. True flipped learning is about opening up the classes, transforming it into hands-on and differentiated learning experience. But uh, 
What is the history of the flipped classroom? It all began in Colorado with the two teachers, Jonathan Bergman and Aaron Sams, in uh, 2007. They began recording their lessons and lectures and turned them into videos. Then they began to use it in their classrooms, calling it pre-broadcasting. A flipped classroom uh, doesn't necessarily provide true flipped learning. It's what happens in the classroom that matters. True flipped learning turns classroom time into a more individualized experience. Instead of an instructor addressing all students as a group, learners move at a, their own pace or in small groups to apply their knowledge. What are the benefits of a flipped classroom? Firstly, it's, it's flexible. Students can learn at their own pace. They take responsibility for their learning. There are more opportunities for higher, higher level learning. Teachers work more closely with students, getting to know students better and providing a better access. And there, uh, there is increased collaboration between students. Teachers think that creating or finding resources for students to use outside of class is the most difficult part of implementing a flipped classroom. However, most of the benefits of a flipped classroom depend on what happens in the classroom. To find a flipped classroom, you have to um, follow these this, uh, fundamentally three steps. First, you uh, decide how you will use your class time and design those activities. Secondly, find or create resources for students to use at home. And third, teach students how to use the material at home. Flipped lesson can take also different form. For example, some lessons may, may take the form of a unit of a hyperdoc that requires students to progress throughout a series of lessons, conference, designed to encourage them to engage with and uh, explore content, apply what they, learn, they are learning and extend their, their knowledge. Let's know what are the tools that we have to use in a flipped classroom. Firstly, we have to use Google Classroom because uh, uh, teachers use Google Classroom in a variety of ways, and it can be a great learning page for students as they navigate assignments. Teachers can direct students to assignment goals, objectives, and instructions in, in classroom. Classroom can also be used to distribute some digital text and other resources. Then we can use Ed Puzzle. Instructional videos are an important, important component of the flipped classroom. Teachers would agree that students must demonstrate understanding of the video content. So teachers have a way to monitor student progress with the, with the, the puzzle and provide the timely feedback. At, at the puzzle, allows teachers to do just that, and it provides teachers with the ability to embed a variety of formative assessment into videos. Then, we can use Padlet. After students have viewed an instructional video, it's a good idea to provide them with an opportunity to reflect on the content. Padlet provides teachers with a way to have students not only review and reflect on content, but also collaborate with their peers. Teachers can create a new Padlet uh, wall for each video and encourage students to answer questions about content as a review for unit assessment. At the end, we can use Kahoot. Formative assessment is, is extremely important in any classroom, and the flipped classroom are not exception. The flipped strategy puts more responsibility for viewing and interacting with the content on the students, and formative assessment is therefore needed after every video. Teachers can create gamified uh, formative assessment activities. 
for their students using CAUT and assign days activity as homework, which allows the students to play the games individually. CAUT activities can also be used as a whole class formative assessment. Students enjoy CAUT because of the gamified component of the activity. With the help of those tools, teachers can implement the flipped classroom approach with students working on their own, either at home or in their classroom, and to provide a more individualized learning experience for all their students. My presentation is ended, uh, and I hope you like it. And I thank you all uh, uh, for inviting me uh, to this. Uh, a wonderful conference, an interesting conference. Great, Thank great, you. Professor Melissa. It was indeed great, and we just loved the gamification and all the digital tools which you have, you know, at least taught us. You discussed about the flipped classroom. I believe this is the need of the hour, and all the global educators might be using it, even I use. You talked about the Google Classroom. You talked about the other things. You talked about Kahoot. Because see, this is the need of the hour, and unless and until we are not close with the digital tools, you know, we can't make our class interesting. So it was really great since you were the last guest speaker and uh, you made a day with the concluding speech of yours and that too, you hit us with the digital tools. So congratulations for the great presentation. And it was I think, loved by each and everybody by I'm getting all the good reviews and all compliments coming all the way out in the chat box. And thank you, thank you lots and lots of the participants 109 we are with it. So I will not waste the time of the others keeping constraint with time because two hours and 22 minutes. Now it is time for all the celebration, jubilation, and accolades. And I think, you know, when you have invested two and a half hours, almost two and a half hours with us, and I could see the sweet baby sitting in the lap of Mr. Mohit Weir. That is a sweet child. Hello. <laughs> looking. Okay. So hello. Hello from India and all parts of the globe. We are just witnessing a sweet child with us. And this is this is the josh. This is the energy that even a young, you know, the young child is participating in the global conference. So that is something good and time for jubilation. Why? Because now we should at least pay the tribute to all the global uh, leaders sitting over here, the organizers and everybody. So I think it's time to give the certificates i think let me uh, shelly shelly i want yes. i want everybody to open the camera yes indeed because indeed. Uh, i this is not uh, really when you watch this uh, many people has turned i want everybody to yes uh, open so that the camera we should have we should have good photographs we should have yes. all smiling faces you know, with good gestures, warm smiles and everything. So before we pass on the certificates to all our global leaders and everybody who is sitting over here and, 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 and my audience, within two minutes, I will be sharing the attendance link also. So just a last request from my side, if everyone of us can come on the video mode, you know, and give that 100 word smile, you know, so that your photographs will be memorable to all of us. So if you could see the first slide of mine, that is the virtual ceremony of International Day of Education, which we celebrated today. And this is the creative of us, each one of us together in one frame. And I think we should begin with the first certificate and my gratitude to none other than our Mr. Mohitin Bhuiya from Bangladesh for sharing his valuable knowledge and active participation as an organizer in this international conference which happened today. So congratulations, Mr. Mohamedin Bhuiya. Mm -hmm. You were a great leader, a great founder, and you were successful in bringing us all together under the one umbrella. So lots and lots of gratitude to you. We loved your work. We loved your energy. We loved your commitment towards work. All the best mm -hmm. to you. Thank With this. Thank you. Thank you, Oita. Okay. With this, my second tribute 
goes to one of my great friends, Dr. Nada from Croatia for sharing her valuable knowledge and active participation as one of the esteemed organizer teams in today's international conference on changing those transforming education. And we just loved your dedication, loved your energy, loved your support. And uh, I think once again, we will be gracious enough to have you amongst us. Thank you, thank you lots and lots. Love to you, dear Nada. And next, mm -hmm. Uh, to Professor Olivera Tedic from Croatia as one of the organizer team members to today's conference. Thanks a lot for spending your time with us, for being a part and parcel of today's event. Our gratitude to you, Professor Olivera. Thank you so much. And next, I have my gratitude to Professor Patricia from Zimbabwe for sharing her valuable knowledge and active participation as one of the organizer team members in today's contribution to today's global conference on changing codes and transforming education. Our love towards you, Professor Patricia. Thanks and thanks for making our day. And next, I proudly pat my back because this certificate of appreciation goes to Dr. Shelley, none other than me, myself, from <laughs> India, for uh, being a moderator and for taking, you know, almost two minutes. For a wonderful <laughs> work. The, this <laughs> certificate <laughs> goes to our wonderful <laughs> moderator, Dr. Shelley Biz from India. And Dr. Shelley, I know that we will be together again because when I choose a moderator or a partner, I always like to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nada and Mohamedin Bhuiya for giving me this opportunity. I just loved hosting the conference. It was lovely. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Hello. Hello. Can yeah. you just show me my certificate? Because I was in the I was in another conference. Pratik, but, um, you will be Pratik, you are going now. It's your order now. <laughs> because just no, this is, this is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After yeah. This is another gracious tribute to a guest mm -hmm. of honor, Ambassador Dr. Lilibet from Philippines for her valuable knowledge and her active participation as a guest of honor in today's conference. Thanks and thanks a lot, to, uh, Ambassador Dr. Lilibet. We just love your participation. Thanks for devoting your time to us. <laughs> Uh, can I expect the participants to please mute themselves so that uh, the certificates are distributed? Okay. Thank so you so much. Is the turn of our guest speaker. And this certificate is presented to none other than Professor Dr. Pratik Rajan yeah, yeah. from India yeah. for his valuable knowledge. And in today's conference. So congratulations, Professor Dr. Pratik. Thank you you thank were one you. today. Thank you. And I would like to express my deep gratitude to the founder Global Education Network, Jane Education and team. And special thanks to my dear friend, Professor Nada, for inviting me here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I when I when I organize the conference, uh, you can be sure that you will be always <laughs> there because I really like uh, all uh, our uh, great speakers. But when you have an uh, option to choose, you always choose the best. Yes. You think the best for me. Thank you. Thank you. And, and for us, for us, Dr. Nada is the best. And for Nada, all of us are the best, you know. So it is so gracious that we all are the best under one umbrella. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And next certificate of gratitude is given to none other than one of my special friends, Dr. Mm -hmm. Rania Lampu from Greece. Congratulations, Dr. Rania, for sharing your valuable knowledge and active participation as a guest speaker today in this international conference on International Day of Education. We love your presentation. Thank you so much for gracing the conference. And next. 
certificate is given to Professor Lika from Georgia. Congratulations, Professor mm -hmm. Lika, for sharing your valuable knowledge and for your active participation as a guest speaker with us. We just love your uh, energy. We just love your beautiful face, your beautiful smile, your beautiful presentation. Thank you for gracing the occasion and giving us your time. We just loved your presence. Thank you so much, Professor Lika. Thank you so much. Thank you. And next, the tribute is given to none other than Dr. Andres from Equator for sharing his valuable knowledge and for being uh, an active participation today as the guest speaker to this international conference. Lots and lots of congratulations to Dr. Andres. We love your presentation. We love your uh, uh, slides and the way you have depicted uh, the presentation to all of us. Thank you so much, Dr. Andres. Thank you so and much. And la, yeah, lovely, lovely to see your face over here. Thank you so much. Okay, and next I have uh, the gratitude, my attitude of gratitude to none other than Professor Dr. Muhammad Mehmudul Hassan from Bangladesh. Congratulations, sir, for your valuable knowledge and your active participation as a guest speaker in today's international conference. And we love to see, and, and it was such a modesty of yours that, you know, on a participants request, you have shared your PPT so that your wisdom is shared to everybody over here. You were a great speaker over here. And uh, rather than that, you know, you have shared the presentation also. So that is more than enough for us. So congratulations for gracing the occasion. We just loved your presence, sir. And next gratitude is given to the other speaker that who is Professor Jovanovic from Croatia for sharing her valuable knowledge and active participation as a guest speaker in today's international conference. You were great and we loved your presence. We loved your energy. We loved your knowledge. We loved your wisdom, which you have shared with all of us. Thanks a lot for your presence. Thank you, dear Dr. Shelley. Yeah, lovely, lovely to see you here on screen with us. And the seventh certificate is given to our wonderful lady, Dr. Muthumena from Indonesia for sharing her digital knowledge rather today mm -hmm. as a guest speaker for participating today in the International Conference on International Day of Education. Though your presentation was a bit lengthy, but yes, it was valuable for us mm -hmm. because each and every slide which you showed to us increased our knowledge. It, incre it quenched our thirst for the knowledge for the digital thing which you have shown to us. So indeed, it was useful for all the participants over here, for all the attendees over here. So we loved Dr. Muthmena's your presence and we want to associate you again with us. So congratulations, Dr. Muthmena. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah, lovely, lovely to see you here with us. <laughs> congratulations. Happy, happy International Education Day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, great, Muthmena. Yes. And the last certificate, but not the least, is given to Professor Melissa from Italy. And it is wonderful. It is wonderful to see your knowledge over here. You know, you spoke on flipped classrooms. You spoke on Kahoot. You spoke on all the digital things. So thanks a lot for sharing your valuable knowledge and for your active participation <coughs> as a speaker in today's conference. Thanks a lot, and we appreciate your presence. We appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you so you. much. So with this, as all the accolades are over, you know, when everything is over, now my audience might be waiting for the attendance link. And yes, it is very much here. I'm sharing it here, OK? Just give me a while, and then it is shared. And all of you are requested to please Fill it, fill the form so that your certificates are readily given to you. Yes, so this is the attendance link and thank you. Thank you for your patience. We have still 114 participants with us and thank you for your patience, you know, two, two hours and 34 minutes and still we are rocking. We can see the smile on, our, on, your, on each everybody's face. And before we end the session, before I call Dr. Nadia for the vote of thanks, can we 
once over again, switch on our videos, our cameras with a radiating smile so that, you know, we really, really, really rock the session and, you know, celebrate, you know, that celebration, the jubilation should be there on everybody's face because ultimately we all are educators and we are celebrating the International Day of Education. Yes, yes, come on the video mode, lovely, lovely. And, and can we have you emojis also? I have given the hearts to all of you. You also can hit the hearts, you can also see the emojis and smileys in everybody. Till the time you are filling the attendance link, okay? And before we bid, actually, bye 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 from our ends. And see, as we already said, this is, this is the, we all are the change makers. And this is not the end of the session. This is not at the end of the session. We again will be meeting once over again to the great conference under the umbrella of uh, uh, GEN. I'm just waiting, uh, Mr. Mohamedin Bhuya, to arrange another global conference so that we again are invited. We again drop the session once over again. So before the final goodbyes, can I have my dear friend, the organizer, one of the organizers, Dr. Professor Nada, to bid the final word of thanks to this conference. Yes, over to Dr. Nada. Yeah, yeah. Music, is music is flowing, but I request you to kindly keep yourself on mute. Please mute yourself. An honest appeal, an honest appeal to mute yourself so that I bring Dr. Nata on the screen for her final word of thanks. Lovely, uh, lovely. Thank you. Audience are lovely. Thank you. Thank you, my dear friend. Thank you, Dr. Shelley. Uh, it's really the time to conduct this wonderful event. And it, we witnessed some new ideas, techniques, ventures on this great topic, on this big day, on this International Day of Education. Uh, respected Mr. Mohiuddin, founder of uh, the GAN uh, organization, Hartis, thanks. Uh, thank you for your big trust. Thank you for your support. And without you, this event wouldn't be possible today. Uh, so this event aims to we achieve all together. We achieve all together, all our Honorable Honor speaker, our amazing guest speakers, everyone, uh, I don't want to go, to, I can say Lilibet, uh, Dr. Pratik, Jelka, Dr. Mutmainak, Rania, uh, our professor from Water, all of you were amazing. All you speakers were amazing participants. You will whole time participating with us and you were with us from the beginning. From the beginning, we have a hundred and more participants and the number is the same at the end. So I hope you all enjoyed and you learn at the same time enough. And uh, we will soon, as Dr. Shelley said, come back with some more inspiring and educating ideas and conferences. Not only ideas and conferences, but with new uh, big projects, uh, with new, uh, I can say, uh, uh, it is a secret. So uh, when the time comes, you will see the new projects of the gen. So till then, stay safe, healthy, and let's build a sustainability and a bright future for our youngs, for the education, and for everybody. That is the mission and that is the vision of the Global Education Network. Thank you, thank you very much. Nada Ratkovic, Global Community Leader, again, and also like a IAU uh, board member, I'm here a president. So thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Nada, for, you know, the final vote of thanks from your side, which was lovely, full of warmth, full of warmth. But before we just end the session, two words I would like to hear from the founder of Global Education Network, yes, yes. Mr. Ibadeen Bhuya. So over to you. Please unmute yourself and address the gathering before 
we just end the meeting thank you thank you welcome to uh, all uh, of our today's uh, attendants and especially thanks to our organizing team chief professor dr nada rajkovic for a great session this was a great session uh, i think uh, today is uh, six month complete uh, our is and i think within six month this session is very great session i want to give great hundred within six months this session our moderator is very great organizing team is very great speaker all of speakers very great especially i want to say miss uh, melissa ispito from italy dr mukmaina from indonesia dr hasan mahmud from bangladesh and all of our today's speaker was very great and mm -hmm. today's session is very great today's attendance is, uh, was very great so just i have request to our organizing team chief nazar that to be please uh, you should uh, stop response within short time you should uh, stop response of attendance link attendance google okay yes 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 uh, uh, not ever uh, attendance link feel more and more uh, you uh, this was uh, this will difficult for you uh, to uh, provide certificate okay thank you thanks to all uh, okay thank you hello Nada. everyone i'm getting from georgia yeah, inga inga let's let's congratulate for inga really wonderful session yeah, yeah. wow inga inga open your camera inga also good night everybody this is the arad kanarari so sorry I think oh, so congratulations. Congratulations. really wonderful, wonderful. It's a pleasure to see you, everybody. I think it, I think it is the great session. Okay. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. Yeah, Nada, can, can I stop meeting? Can I? Uh, yes, can yes, I... yes. We can stop the meeting. Yes. yes. Yes, we can stop the meeting. Goodbye. Good night. Good evening. Bye. Good bye, bye. 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 B